guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, uh, doing a little update on the free tee. So uh, the body is back off again. So in the last video you saw where I was made the, uh, the patterns for each of the corners, uh, shaped them up on the sandbag in the wheel and gave you guys a couple little tips for smoothing out panels and, and making uh, corners like this on a tee body. So uh, I kind of decided to uh, put my head down this past weekend and get the rear half of this car all welded up. So I had this rear panel that we did earlier this summer that Andrew and I made uh, where we put this little bead detail in it where the torque tube goes through and then we kind of re-radius to or change the way the beads come in the back uh, to kind of make it all look like it flows. So I got the rear corners shaped and uh, welded in place and I wanted to get this rear panel all welded in place. A lot of welding and it kind of took me pretty much all weekend between having people visit and uh, me just doing the normal life thing. Uh, I was able to get the, the two corners welded in. They're fit pretty good and uh, they're, they're kind of finished out uh, pretty darn good considering the rest of the car is probably not even as nice as those corners turned out. Uh, but they are, are good and they just need a little bit of filler and, and primer and all that like everything else. So. Now the rear panel, I spent pretty much all day Sunday uh, welding up the rear panel on this car. And uh, this is a lot of weld here. You know, this is a big area. And for anybody that's done this kind of work before, this is a scary area to weld in because the panel is relatively flat. It does have a little bit of curvature side to side and it starts to dive down in at the bottom. But uh, for overall, it's a big flat area that by doing this long weld, if you're not careful when you're laying the panel out, um, when you're tacking it, when you're welding it, uh, that whole process, if you get too out of control with the heat uh, or if you let the panel get too out of control as you're welding, uh, it can get really, really wacky and the panel can get all kinds of waves and craziness in it. So as I was welding the panel up, I was kind of doing little tiny uh, sections of weld and then I would I would hammer on dolly to stretch the weld back out to kind of get it back in shape and I kind of just worked my way across the panel for the most part. So I got the panel pretty good, got all the welds pretty much stretched out. I haven't touched anything with a grinder yet. Uh, but what I was finding is I was getting some oil canning area in here that even though I stretched the welds back out, uh, it was acting kind of funny in there. So I started to sand this area just to see what was going on. I ran my hand on the inside and felt like there was a little bit of damage in here, but it didn't really project to the outside. So you guys know what that means. There was some filler in here. So what it ended up being is, I thought this panel was a little, little loose before I welded this in uh, because the, the body was just thrown around and this bottom was all like, kind of rotted out in fiberglass. But what there was, it looks like there was a hit or damage that was right here in the center back area of this body. And they basically just kind of like filled it in. And um, while it worked okay over time, what happened is now that I've welded and introduced heat in other places, it started to act kind of crazy. So I, I sanded a little bit. What I need to do today is work on getting the rest of this back panel. I may even just do the rest of the corners here and get them stripped of all the paint and I need to kind of see what's going on here and try and get this worked out. Uh, it's a little high in here and I've worked some of the real bad stuff out already but there's still some popping here in this back panel. So I like to take care of this. Over the years I've tried to get a little better at this stuff. You could put a little strap or brace in the back of the panel and it would probably be just fine uh, since you're doing body filler anyways but I've tried to get a little better and I don't want to have to kind of, I don't want to say cheap, but I don't want to have to do that fix. I'd rather try and understand what's wrong with the metal and try and shrink this area that's kind of overstretched uh, or figure out if there's some other damage up around here that's causing that to be pulled and pop around. So I'm going to strip this paint and I'm going to work on this area a little bit, see if I can get a little better. We'll dress out this weld um, hopefully by the end and we will have kind of the whole back section of the car basically all fixed up and um, right now at least we got all the major rust is gone that's like huge I'm, I'm so excited so but need to keep pushing on we'll tackle this see where we get for the day and kind of show you guys where we're at
All right, so I got the back panel all stripped of all the paint and uh, pretty happy with everything. Didn't find any major damage that I didn't expect other than the stuff that was right here that kind of is why we are where we are. Uh, there is a lot of pitting on the back of this body as expected and I've been kind of trying to figure out what happened to this thing. I think this, this car was probably a field or barn or woods find before it was restored back in the day and uh, there's a bunch of pitting on the back of this panel. I'm doing my best to just close my eyes and, and not have to deal with it. Uh, I'm really, really tempted to just make this whole back panel. It would probably be a lot quicker to be honest and it would end up being nicer. But uh, at that point, I probably built about 90% of the car from scratch and I'm trying to actually drive it this spring. So I'm going to just uh, embrace the pitting. There's pitting on the rest of the body. It's gonna get a whole skim coat of filler across the whole body, so what's the difference? Anyway, so this is our main damage I was talking about right there. You can see it's popping in and out, which is telling me it's, it's either stretched here or the metal is stressed and being pulled because of damage somewhere else. So an interesting thing, it's pulling here. I noticed over in here, just next to it, to my right, it's a little low. And uh, I was kind of trying to figure out what was causing that, if it was where it was welded or what it was. But if I stick my hand up in here, so I pop this, that's out. So I pop it in, watch what happens when I push right here, just to the right of it. That guy there just popped out. So if you guys are trying to figure this kind of stuff out, this is the type of work, the type of thing I'll do where I'll try and figure out where the damage is. I'll start pushing around on the panel and see what's going on. And sometimes it's somewhere next to it and not right in the bullseye that's causing the problem. So I bet this loose spot here is actually being pulled because of there's some stress going on over here. So I'm gonna tap around in here, probably tap on the weld just a little bit and see if I can kind of get this all to, to even out, get this area to raise up, get this area to just kind of like level out and not pop, and this area down here, um, I can just smooth really quickly. So it's just these two spots. So we'll see what we can do and hopefully we can get this uh, smoothed out and tightened up pretty quickly.
Alright guys, so you saw me doing a bunch of different methods to try and uh, repair this panel and what I basically did was I started with the uh, most least aggressive methods first. So I was hammer and dolly, slapper, and then I got the shrinking disc out and kind of worked around and, and I was still having problems with this panel uh, popping. When we were first starting, when I was pushing in on this panel, it was popping so hard that it was affecting an area that was real big. I have a kind of like a half moon drawn here how big it was. So it was popping way up into here, uh, which was causing, you know, the, the damage was in here, but it was it was affecting an area way up into here because of how bad it was. So I was trying to hammer on the, the welds to try and adjust things and shrink areas to pull other areas. Um, I actually kind of went a little overboard back in this corner back here and I had to uh, heat shrink that area because it was, uh, I overstretched it. Uh, trying to hammer around and that's one thing I found is if you start really hammering on a panel a lot Stop yourself because you're probably getting out of control uh, And you need to reevaluate so I definitely in that area thought that was the spot I started hammering on it and I started actually stretching it so much It was causing additional damage, which I'm still gonna have to fix that area, but it's a little better But it wasn't correcting this area. So now um, I just tapped on it, but I did like four little shrinks here, and I did these shrinks where basically I could still see where the major damage was when I dug the body filler out. There was like almost like puncture marks or really sharp dents where it looked like something smashed into it that was sharp. And there was three or four of them in here, and I hammered those flat, and that got rid of the dent, but that's how what created this loose spot because the metal was stretched by being punched in that when I flattened the metal, sure it was pretty flat, but the, that extra metal from being stretched needed to go somewhere, and that's what's causing this, I think, is causing this uh, to kind of pop in and out. So what I had to do, because those other uh, methods weren't working as well, is I went to, the, to a torch. Heat shrinking is probably the most effective way to shrink a panel, but it's also kind of dangerous if you're not careful because uh, heat shrink, uh, a lot of stuff happens really fast. You got to really watch the panel and you got to really kind of act quick to make stuff uh, work how you want. Uh, when I heat shrink, the method that I like, this isn't the best for me, other people do it other ways. Um, I do not use a, a cold rag. Usually what I do is I heat shrink a small little area. Uh, in this case, I heat shrunk where the damage was and I took a hammer and kind of gathered the metal together while it was still hot and I hammered the area and kind of, you could probably see I was doing like glancing blows, moving the dolly around, gathering the metal together. And what that does is kind of gather the metal to help with the shrink. And it also, uh, when you heat shrink a panel, it will tend to kind of like bubble up in that area where you heat shrunk. And if you just leave it alone, uh, you end up with a spot that's kind of like raised or, or sunken in. So when you hammer on it, you can also kind of planish it and help smooth it out while the metal's still like hot. Uh, it, it just makes the finish work a little nicer because you're not trying to fix a panel and then also fix a spot that's like raised up or, or sunken in from doing the heat shrink. So that's that's the way that I do it. Uh, the way I was sort of uh, understood over the years um, and, and the idea that I kind of uh, subscribe to is by using a lot of like using a cold rag and shocking the metal after you uh, after you heat it and shrink it can actually kind of harden the metal and uh, by shocking it doing that letting it air cool it's going to shrink no matter what you don't need to use a cold rag to make the metal shrink uh, science you know rules are that it, when you introduce heat like that, it's going to shrink just by doing it, by cooling. By shocking, it doesn't necessarily mean that it needs to happen, but shocking, it can also uh, harden the panel in that area and can make it harder to hammer and dolly. So I usually leave it alone and just hammer it and gather it together and then I let it cool naturally and then I work around and check. It takes a little longer, but that's the way that I am able to get the panels to keep them under control for me. Uh, other guys might do it other ways if they are a little more experienced because they may know what they're doing and control the panel. Some guys that are just uh, shocking a panel like that may not know what they're doing and that's just what they've learned and it's been passed down, but it's not the best for everybody. So I have a little area that's just barely popping right here that's actually where I shrunk already. So I think somewhere around there needs one or two more little heat shrinks. I think the panel will then tighten up good enough that I can go back to doing a hammer and dolly and shrinking disc in the normal uh, less aggressive methods and we will have this thing tightened up enough that we can kind of knock our welds down, planish hammer a little bit and hopefully have it good enough that we can put some body filler on uh, just like the rest of the car. 
All right, so uh, after a little bit more hammering and like one more heat shrink, I was able to get the panel uh, firmed up. So pretty sweet. Thing is nice and tight. Now I gotta mention there's there's no bracing behind this piece at all. There's bracing that is wraps around and connects to the B pillars and also runs down and turns into the uh, in into the body mounts, but that is not attached in any way to this back panel. So this is all free. And uh, like I think I mentioned earlier in the video, you could uh, run a brace in here. That's what a lot of body shops do uh, when they have that problem. It's a much quicker fix is to run like a strap so it can't oil can and then fill over it. Uh, I wanted to try and challenge myself and get a big, big, huge oil can out of this panel, which I have done. It's tight. And you can see the panel has flex to it, but it's not popping like before. So I have a little bit of a spot over in here that I mentioned before that I was fighting where I don't know if I hammered too much and caused the damage or what it was, but that spot there has, a, has just a little bit if I really force it. Um, I might try and work that out just a little more, but this huge spot, I'll remind you guys, it was oil canning and affecting an area this big. That is all tightened up now. Uh, so what I think I'm going to do uh, as a, just a precautionary thing because it is a hot rod, it's going to vibrate, it's going to make noise, uh, it's going to flex, it's going gonna, it's gonna to move around, it's an old car. I'm going to put probably one or two little tabs on the inside of this panel right near the bead that basically just keep this panel from vibrating as much so even when the car is just idling uh, and you're driving down the road this is going to flex like this. So just to reduce a little bit of the flex at the bottom of the panel, the, the center of the panel is obviously fine. I've tightened all that up by shrinking, uh, but I think if I put like a little brace somewhere in like that, it's gonna help just keep the panel from, from flexing or, or vibrating over time and maybe causing a failure in the paint primer or filler, which we do not want. Uh, the funny thing is this whole entire area is covered. I have all this time into an area with welding these, welding this, uh, that you will never ever see, but yeah, I think it is definitely uh, important when you're doing a build to try and get these types of spots looking good and also functioning correctly. So uh, hopefully that's helpful for you guys on how to get a, um, a big oil canned area out and it's a little update on what's going on with the T. Uh, I'm gonna finish this rear panel just a little bit better. We're gonna throw the body back on again and uh, this, uh, this coming Sunday, tonight's Tuesday, uh, Sunday night, or Sunday day, Ben is coming over and he's gonna help me, uh, or I'm gonna help him rather, get the uh, that driver's side header hopefully built and uh, figured out. And uh, maybe if we're lucky, uh, we will have time that we can roll it outside uh, to give you guys another look at the car uh, sitting outside with the new header on there. I'm really excited. Uh, I really wanna see that before Christmas time. That would be an awesome present to myself. So that's all I have for this one. I appreciate you guys watching. As always, we do videos on Tuesdays Fridays and Sundays. Right now we are doing a ton of free tea videos because that's what I am laser focused on. Uh, in between we're going to try and throw in some videos that some of the other guys that hang out at the shop are working on. The yellow tea we'll have a little update on that soon. Uh, we should have some regular videos coming probably uh, starting the beginning of the year on Andrew's uh, Sweet 16 project. We will have some updates coming pretty regularly hopefully here in the new year on that. So uh, lots of stuff going on. Excited for a uh, eventful and productive 2019. Thanks guys, catch you later.